Tonight on Wink News, the moment a concealed carry holder takes down a would-be shooter. Wink News shows you the new surveillance video from the scene. A milestone moment for high schoolers still reeling from tragedy. How the victims of the Parkland school shooting hope to honor their friends on graduation day. And a deputy drops a racial slur and it's all caught on camera. But this isn't the first time the sheriff's office dealt with poor behavior. How they're responding to the new allegations. And new right now, surveillance video captures the moments a man pulls out a gun and a good Samaritan shoots him down. We followed this shooting at Campbell Roofing as breaking news yesterday. The man who fired his gun is a concealed carry permit holder. We don't know who he is, but he might have saved lives. The man who originally pulled out a gun is Kevin Bruzos. He is a convicted felon. Wig News reporter Chris Grisby is live at the scene of the shooting. Chris, what can you tell us? John Carlos, this is where it all happened yesterday, right outside of Campbell's roofing here in Cape Coral. And a man, an employee, tells me his coworker acted in self-defense after a man came out of this door brandishing a gun and pointing it at multiple po uh, people out here in this parking lot. And check this out. It was all caught on video. This is the video. A source shared it exclusively with Wink News. You can see the moments leading up to yesterday's shooting off of Southeast 15th Avenue. K police say that's Kevin Bruzos walking out of the office. He then points the gun at a crowd, and seconds later, Bruzos is on the ground. A man with a concealed carry permit shot Bruzos in self defense. Next, the Good Samaritan moves the gun away from him until police arrive. Kate police say Bruzos is a convicted felon and shouldn't have had a gun. And Bruzos is currently sitting at Lee Memorial Hospital. And at last check, we just checked on him a few minutes ago. He's listed under stable condition. And as for that good Samaritan, he's not facing any charges by the Cape Coral Police Department. Reporting live in Cape Coral, Chris Grisby, Wink News Now. Well, Chris, thank you. Breaking right now, a one-year-old is seriously hurt in a crash. It happened in Hendry County earlier this afternoon. It happened along West Broad Street. The child wasn't in the car. The girl was with another adult. That one-year-old was rushed to Tampa General Hospital. Count on Week News to let you know as soon as we learn more. And law enforcement is searching for two drivers connected to a hit and run. FHP says Janet Emile died in Pasco County last night after she hung halfway out the window of a Chevy Tavo. Now the victim fell out of the car and onto State Road 54. Another car hit her. Both drivers left the scene. Emile later died at the hospital. And right now, U.S. officials are in China to negotiate the White House new tariff threat. The U.S. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross is in Beijing to talk trade after the president's threats to heighten tariffs on Chinese high-tech goods. We News reporter Kenneth Craig explains. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross is in Beijing for talks as the Trump administration works to lower the U.S. trade deficit with China. Ross wants China to fulfill a promise to buy more American farm goods, energy, and other products. President Trump is watching developments closely. He tweeted on Saturday, the United States must, at long last, be treated fairly on trade. China is not the only target. On Friday, the U.S. imposed tariffs on nearly all imported steel and aluminum from Canada, Mexico, and the European Union. We have to believe that at some point, common sense will prevail. Those nations, some of America's closest allies, are planning to retaliate with tariffs of their own, and some U.S. manufacturers are concerned about a trade war. We're inflicting some needless pain out on our farm families, and, and that's just not necessary. American makers of steel and aluminum will get a boost from the tariffs, but it remains to be seen if they stay in effect for long. The president says he's open to negotiating new deals with trading partners. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, New York. And the president also asked the Commerce Department to explore imposing tariffs on cars, trucks, and auto parts. And celebrating equality and love, those are just some of the messages from the second Na Naples Pride Festival in Cambier Park today. The event kicked off with a special moment to honor Gilbert Baker, the man who designed the Pride rainbow flag. Later on, guest speakers shared their stories, including Mayor Bill Barnett. All the proceeds go towards an emergency fund set aside for members of the local LGBTQ community in need. Thousands of people passed by throughout the day to show their support. And we have really good friends that we, we were here to support because it's very important, especially in a community like Naples, which necessarily hasn't always been the most open-minded. 
there was an overwhelming feeling of unity and and fun. Like everybody was so festive. Event coordinators say they plan to continue this event for years to come. And if you missed the 2018 Wink News Hurricane Special last night, well, you're in luck. There's an encore presentation of Irma. Lessons learned tonight on WXCW at 8 p.m. We highlight some of the key things we learned during, before, and after the Category 3 hurricane hit Southwest Florida. This is the second day of hurricane season, so it's crucial to plan and prepare now. We walk you through the best ways to do that tonight at 8 on WXCW. Well, Zach, thank you. All new on Wink News, body cameras capture the moment a sheriff's deputy in West Palm Beach made racially charged comments to a colleague. It's not just the language. It's not just something that he said. It was the tone behind it and the intent, the hurtfulness. And while the sheriff's office says that deputy is sorry, he is not the only one whose behavior is being called into question. Wink News reporter Al Peffley explains. The incident involving PBSO deputy Frank Orsini was caught on video. According to the internal affairs report, the deputy, wearing his PBSO uniform, made a racially derogatory comment in the presence of a West Palm Beach police officer who was wearing a body-worn camera. In the video, the deputy uses the N-word. He said it smells like effing dirty N-word in my effing car. The report states Deputy Diorsini called police to investigate a break-in of his personal vehicle, a Jeep, that was parked outside his house. The culprit had cut open the rear passenger vinyl window. Deputy Diorsini told the officer the culprit had stolen about $80 from his wallet when they broke into his Jeep. We showed the video to State Senator Bobby Powell, an African-American state lawmaker from Palm Beach County. It's very alarming. It's, I'm very concerned that this would happen. Deputy D. Orsini told Internal Affairs he was upset and mad that his property was violated. According to the IA report, he said his emotions got the better of him and he realizes he represents PBSO while in uniform and this behavior would not continue. It's not just the language. It's not just something that he said. It was the tone behind it and the intent, the hurtfulness. PBSO gave us a written statement saying, quote, the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office holds its employees to the highest standards and never forgets about its duty to preserve the public's trust. Allegations of inappropriate behavior, criminal or otherwise, are taken very seriously. Recently, PBSO had another incident involving a deputy who allegedly made disturbing posts on social media. One post shows Deputy Jason Van Dusen smoking a cigar while in uniform. It reads, taking a break after two shootings tonight in Belglade. Another post compares Michelle Obama to a monkey. The sheriff's office fired Van Dusen on Friday. He was also investigated back in 2014 for the same reason. Prior to his firing, Van Dusen spent three months on administrative leave. Wink News will be right back after this.